Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, we're gonna learn about the recipe data that is in our data folder in the recipes.txt file. And once we have a chance to understand this file format, uh, we're gonna look at the C-sharp code in the recipe data source.cs that opens this file, it extracts out the data, and then it creates instances of the recipe data item and recipe data group, which ultimately gets bound to the user interface, okay? So at first glance, the contents of this file might look like chaos. It's actually a popular file format called JSON, which stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It's a very simple but flexible representation of objects and their properties using only plain old text. Now, having some familiarity with JavaScript objects would really be beneficial here. Uh, in fact, if you wanted to, you could watch one particular video in the JavaScript Fundamental series on Channel 9. It's the one about object literals. I put a slide with the location right here on the video. Uh, but you'll at least learn more about JavaScript's approach towards objects and uh, object literals. And this pretty much... Uh, is a representation of that, but we'll still cover some of the, the basics of it in this lesson. And there's really just a few things to learn and it's pretty simple. Each object, first of all, is denoted by a series of braces. So for example, if we were to match things up purely by indentation level, you could see, for example, that here is an object and here's an object. And then maybe at a larger view, this whole thing here is an object, all right? And then there, here's an object here, all right? So there's just objects inside of objects. Um, and the object is dynamic in so much that all it needs in order to support a property is to merely declare it. It's not like C Sharp where you have to declare, uh, create a class and, and declare, uh, you know, the, the the type and things of that nature. If you need a new property, you just plop that data in using this style of syntax where you have the property name and then a colon and then the property's value. And then you separate properties with commas, okay? Now, obviously we're hoping our JSON correctly matches our strongly typed class declarations in our code. If not, we'll probably get an exception whenever we import this data and then we look for uh, the various parts of this inside of our strongly typed classes in C-sharp. So there might be a disconnect there and we just have to make sure that that doesn't happen. Now, there are some uh, special cases, like for example, if a property, let's say this property, if it's supposed to hold an array, like a collection, but just let's call it a simple array, then it's gonna use these square brackets. So in this case, extra images is actually an array of, in this case, three image objects as denoted by the curly brace. So whenever we see this property, colon, and then an open square bracket and a closed square bracket, we know that it's working with an array. In fact, the entire set of data, if you see here at the very top, here is an open square bracket. If we go all the way to the bottom, here is a closed square bracket. So the whole, the whole collection of data is just an array of these individual objects that are separated at various points uh, with a comma. Now, if a property will hold a reference to an object, then you simply do something like this. Now, in this case, you can see group, colon, and then it has an open curly brace and a closed, closed curly brace. So it is a property called group that holds a reference to another object. In this case, then we see the individual properties of the group object. All right, and if you were to look at this objectively and kind of back look, you know, step back for a moment. This has a directions property. It has an ingredients property. It owns a group. Uh, it has a prep time and a short title and a title. Okay. We can see that this main object is a recipe data item or ultimately will become a recipe data item inside once we, you know, create instances of that using this, uh, this information. It has a group as we just pointed out a moment ago, 
which is an embedded object literal representing the recipe data group that it belongs to. And so this is a little bit different way of thinking about containment or the ownership of objects. We might be thinking, oh, it might be better to start with group at the highest level and then create individual recipe items kind of as a collection. And that's certainly one way to render the information. The person who implemented this or the team that implemented it decided to do it uh, differently. And that's all, it's just an implementation choice. Uh, so it's just not the case for this specific example. But the main takeaway here is that there's a bunch of data in this file it all follows the same format uh, as JSON. It is JSON, and there's just a lot of data here. And so what we want to do now is take a look at the code that parses through all this and then creates instances of real objects in C-sharp that we can work with. Okay, let's close this down. And let's take a look at the data model folder in our recipe data source. And we're going to scroll down to the very bottom where we see our recipe data source. Specifically, we want, we want to take a look at this load local data async. Now, you might recall that when we were wiring all this up, we opened up the app.xaml.cs file and we added code that made a call into this load local data async method. All right. And inside of this, you're going to see some new keywords in C sharp 5.0. For example, this async keyword at the method level, and then this await keyword. And I'm going to spend the next lesson talking about the new uh, features in C sharp. Um, uh, the async features all right and uh, you know I, I can't go into a lot of depth because it is a little complex but we can certainly learn how to consume the uh the async versions of methods that are available to us within the windows runtime and that's exactly what skill I want you to have as we come out of the next lesson. Okay, so let's just hold on to that thought for a moment. But at high level we can certainly just read the uh the comments the first step in this load local data async is to retrieve the recipe data from the recipes.txt file. So we are getting the file called data and notice the two slashes because we have to escape the slash character in C sharp recipes.txt. And then once we have that file, we want to read the text from that file. So we get a result. And then we're going to begin to parse that result. We would expect it to be a JSON array. So we use this JSON array object. It's available to us from windows.data.json.json.array. So it's built into the Windows runtime. And we parse through it and we get the parsed version of, of, the, uh, of the document into this variable called recipes. And now we're gonna pass that recipes, that JSON object of recipe data items and recipe data groups into this helper method called create recipes and recipe groups, which is right below it. All right, and so what is this JSON array exactly? Well, it's basically an in-memory representation of everything that you see here. And so again, there will be hierarchies of objects. Like we would expect that at the highest level, this would be considered an object. So we're gonna iterate through each one of the, uh, of the recipe data, okay? And that's what we're doing in this outermost for each loop. So whenever we start a new iteration of this for each loop, we're gonna create a new recipe data item. And then we're gonna to start to inspect the various keys. And the keys are here, like the background image and the directions and the extra images and the favorite and the group. We would see these repeated in every single instance of our recipe data here, right? And so we're gonna look at each of the keys and if they match up with either the word key or title or short title or prep timer directions, essentially the properties of a recipe data item, then what we'll do is we'll get the value associated with that key. So in this case, the key background image is associated with this, this image source. The directions property or attribute is associated with this long text, okay? And we're gonna grab that out using this little chunk of code right here. So for every one of the individual little items in here, we're gonna do an inner for each loop right here. We're gonna, for each key in this object, we're gonna look at the value. If we can't get the value, then just, then just continue on to the next iteration of this for each loop. But if we can get the value, then it will be placed in this output value parameter in this try get value, okay? So 
For example, we would expect the first iteration to be looking for background image. So let's look for background image. Nope, 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 nope. Yes. All right. So now this code will execute. It'll call the set image method of our new instance of our recipe data item, and it will pass in the value that it retrieved from this little chunk of code, all right? And it just keeps doing that until it fully populates an entire recipe data item. Now it comes to the group at some point and you know the group itself is its own object and in fact there needs to be a relationship. So a little extra work has to be done here. Here we are going and uh, putting the recipe data group into uh, a new container called recipe group and here's where things get a little bit interesting. We are looking for, through all groups that currently exist in memory, we're looking for this group. If it does not exist, then go ahead and create that group. Otherwise, set the group, the recipe group, equal to uh, the group that we find here or the one that we create, okay? So we're essentially, if it doesn't already exist, if it does exist, use that one. If it doesn't exist, go off and create it. And so that's what this next, this next code does. And this is almost a mirror image of what we saw when uh, working with the create recipe, uh, what is the name of this? Create recipes and recipe groups, all right? As we were working through each item, each recipe item, the same thing now goes for each group. We're looking at each key for a given group and we're looking at its title, short title description, background image, group image, and so on. All right, and then at the very end, once we've fully populated the new group, we add it to the all groups collection. So just keep in mind that this last portion, there's something a little bit different going on here because we are trying to either locate or create a group if it doesn't already exist in memory. Okay. Now, one last thing I wanna point out before we kind of wrap this up. Um, I've skipped over the async portions of this. We're going to talk about that in the very next lesson. And we're just about ready to get back on, on track. Uh, most of the hard work, honestly, is behind us. We've covered so much ground and we've covered so many foundation, uh, foundational ideas that I think the rest is kind of downhill from here. We'll be able to simply add and refine functionality in the remainder of the hands-on labs and in our own lesson series. So again, we're going to talk about async in the next lesson, and then we'll be on to exercise three in lab number one after that. We'll see you there. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.